Hey flower fam, welcome back to All Things Flowers. I'm super excited for this week's video. Hope you guys enjoy and hit that like button. Well, good morning, welcome back to All Things Flowers. So we have an exciting weekend this weekend. It's pumpkin day weekend, so we're gonna be designing some pumpkins and just taking you along to see what pumpkin day at the market is like. You guys, it is a beautiful 64 degree morning here. And once the sun comes up, you guys, the pollinators, the wasps, everything comes out so I need to get these flowers harvested I'm going to also show you what's blooming in the garden and some interesting fall flowers that I'm going to be harvesting for the market so stay tuned Look you guys, I would love to harvest as quickly as I can, but I have to be careful because I have sleeping bees in a lot of the flowers and it has been bumblebee season this year. So let me know what critters have you seen a lot in your garden. All right, you guys, so I'm gonna have to make my way quickly harvesting um, because the sun is coming up and I'm also running through a lot of spider webs. So I love these zinnias. The only thing is there's a bunch of little spiders in them and they blend in with the flower. Here's what's been harvested so far. I'm gonna show you some beautiful roses that are blooming in the garden. I'm dreading harvesting some basil because this is exactly the spot where I've been stung before. I know they say basil, eucalyptus, and things like that repels wasps, but it's absolutely false. Um, they, bees and wasps love basil. So my little angels are awake now and they're earthing and we come outside and pray. I'm now going to start on the mason jars with the flowers that were harvested this morning. So in my experience with harvesting basil, the way I keep them hydrated in zinnia, since they do not like the cooler, is I place an ice cube into the water and that has been preserving the um, basil and the zinnias just fine. So after all the earthing and harvesting, I took a shower and I got myself together and now I am making bouquets. So I'm going to be making more, more fall bouquets and some colorful bouquets. We have some interesting flowers and I can't wait to show you how the bouquets turn out. So sometime last week after making 19 centerpieces and also getting ready for the market, I did something with my thumb. Um, I'm probably, it's probably just an effect of being older, um, which I'm not gonna say how old I am, but I ended up hurting my thumb and so I just have a copper cast just to help me with the bouquet making process so my um, thumb doesn't hurt too much. I know a lot of flower farmers do not like harvesting cosmos, but honestly, 
I don't mind it too much, but it really is giving me a hard time in the business trying to fit it into this bouquet. And I have one and a half hands at the moment, so um, it's just been a little challenging just trying to get these cosmos to work, but I think I did it. So here is the Mexican bush sage. You guys, this is so beautiful and I haven't seen a flower farmer use this in a bouquet before. So I want to try to make a super cute um, bouquet, just kind of colorful with some peachy tones to match that beautiful purple. And I think I found the perfect zinnia. So I'm super excited about this bouquet and using this Mexican bush sage. So happy look at this beautiful yellow wax flower you guys I am so happy and this is really making the bouquet stand out with the Mexican bush sage and this yellow wax flower Ooh, I'm so excited so finally done with the bouquets and here they are decided to make more bouquets and I'm using this beautiful goldenrod you guys the other name for this goldenrod is solidago and it's really good for allergies it tastes really good in a tea you guys you can pull the flower in the leaves and it has like a soft honey like flavor so if you see this grown on the side of the road and you're able to pick some you can make a really nice tea that will help with those seasonal allergies Okay, it's really tough with this cast on my hand. Now I'm going to make some pumpkins. I can't wait for you guys to see these done at the market. So I can't wait to see how these turn out. I'm all set up for the market. Today is Saturday. It is pumpkin weekend and I can't wait to show you the booth set up.
I'm next to this really cool vendor. Check out her cool work, you guys. This is amazing. Okay, so when you come to the Dallas Farmers Market, look for Miss Katie Towels. Isn't that amazing? strange for this market um, normally like my bouquets go super fast but um, people are enjoying being able to pick their own bouquet so um, hopefully we will be able to sell at least one bouquet hopefully before 12 so fingers crossed hey guys it is Sunday morning and it is so beautiful out here I just got done earthing and praying and I'm hoping that today is a lot better I'm hoping to sell out today and hopefully to sell more bouquets and mason jars um, everybody was so excited to create their own bouquet so that's that's good um, but I stayed until after 6 at the market because people were still wanting to buy flowers so I am just hoping today is just a big beautiful day and a sellout day so let's head off to the market you guys, so while I'm waiting for the car to defrost, um, to defrog actually, let's have an honest talk. Okay, so let's talk about um, just being a business owner. Um, being a business owner, you know, you are responsible for your brand, how your business is portrayed as a vendor, um, and also the challenge of just being a vendor is you're constantly having to set up your booth, your product, and it can be it's a lot of labor um it's a lot of labor just preparing for the markets um it's also a lot of labor just constantly lifting and unpacking and packing it back up um and then our markets are eight hours i'm not complaining i'm just saying that you know it is a long time um you are standing on your feet and um i know a lot of people say oh just get help and it's not easy especially when you're trying to portray your business a certain way and you know there are people who won't treat your business you know how you would treat your business um you have to worry about people being on their cell phones not green customers you know things like that um can you trust that person or you know are they going to take your money you know so it's a lot of things that go into it and you know of course that's what you sign up for but you you know let's say for instance like when we had our shop you guys we weren't getting nearly as many questions as we get when you have a booth when you have a booth and you have your product spread out you know people are what do you do how much is this and you know so like at Walmart for instance or Target you know wherever you shop customers aren't just going around asking the managers all these questions you know but when you have your booth space people are constantly asking you questions even if the information is provided um, so you know if you're seeing you know anywhere between 200 or more customers a day you know and you're constantly answering those questions it does get tiring you know just being honest um, I love what I do I love flowers I love everything about flowers I'm named after a flower so it's not that I'm complaining but I'm just being real and honest with you guys and it is a lot of hard work it's a it's a lot of work you know whatever you do throughout the week um, you know your regular things that you do throughout the week and then just you know preparing for the markets making product um, things like that so it's a lot that goes into it and um, when you're standing there for eight hours and you're answering questions and you're cleaning up after your booth or just different things packing and unpacking it does weigh on you um, <clears throat> So I just wanted to talk about these things. Um, and then, you know, if you're a vendor or you're a flower farmer, can you relate as well? Because you're out in the field, we're watering um, twice a day. I know that I am here in Texas um, and it's a lot of work planting. And then um, we have our fall crops and stuff. So, you know, it's just a lot that, that goes into, you know, having a business, but also running your business. And then the other side of the business 
So, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to have an honest talk, you guys. My allergies have been acting up. Um, I take my tea and things like that. So, it's, it's definitely not as worse as it could be right now with um, allergy season. Um, so, you know, I mean, still battle it just because, you know, there's a lot of dust and stuff blowing. Um, let's talk about that. So, yeah, when you're vendoring, um, a lot of the markets are outdoors you know I don't really know of too many indoor markets and if you're at an indoor market you guys are so lucky because um when we're outside you guys we're having to battle like every element so comparing it to like when we had our shop again you just open the door you know the product is already set um we just had to set the flowers out it was a lot less labor um, we were not in the elements, you know, just supposed to getting in your car and then, you know, walking into the building. Um, so yeah, when you're standing out there, the market is eight hours, but actually you are preparing, you're prepping. Um, so you, you're really, you know, up an extra, probably two or three hours, just getting ready for the market again. So it is, it's longer days and it's battling all the elements the wind the dust you know knocking over your signs and all of that so you just have to take that into consideration if you have a tent at your um booth you know you want to have like extra weights to hold that down but then you're taking into account also that you're having to carry those weights to hold that tent down so it's a lot that goes into it, you guys. And so if you're a customer and you're not a vendor, you know, just be respectful of the business owners, the vendors, the workers there. It's a lot of work that goes into just setting up for you guys. Um, not saying that people aren't respectful, but I'm just saying, you know, sometimes we can, we can not be so mindful of others. And so, you know, just be mindful. Um, and then too, if you're a vendor, making sure you have clear signage is super important because to avoid all those questions, you know, just make sure your signage is clear. Um, it doesn't look like the windshield is defrosting, so I'm just gonna head off to the market. It is officially 10 o'clock, the start of the market, and I'm finally all set up, so it feels good to be set up on time. I'm ready for the day, and I can't wait to see if um, we're going to sell out today. It's the end of the market, and no, I did not sell out. Pumpkin day is in the books. It has been a good weekend, a long weekend, and I am so tired and sweaty, you guys, so I am ready to head home. At the market, I met some people from Florida that were escaping the Hurricane Helene. Let's pray for all of those affected and see you in the next video. So reflecting on this weekend's market, it really made my weekend, although I did not sell out or meet the $3,000 goal, but to have people say that they came to the farmer's market just to make their own bouquet. I saw you on TikTok and I thought this was so cool and I just wanted to come make my own bouquet. So that was amazing. Really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, I'm wishing you guys peace, love, and flowers. See you in the next one.